For centuries, people believed natural hot water had magic properties. Taking the waters was a popular cure. And in Rotorua, sooner or later, everyone tries the treatment, though usually in the rather more sophisticated surroundings of the ward baths. Mineral hot water relaxes you, massage pampers the skin, the sheer indulgence makes you feel a million dollars. But like most of the old-fashioned spas, its medical value is limited. It's mostly for the passing tourists with jaded appetites. In fact, the main bathhouse is now a licensed restaurant. Sufferers from true rheumatics go to Queen Elizabeth Hospital nearby, where health department doctors have developed a treatment equal to any in the world for getting people going again, using joints they found too painful to move. There's no total cure, however. Joints just can't be restored if they're damaged permanently. Hot baths are used, not as magic, but as part of a general revitalization, including exercise, drugs and surgery, all aimed at restoring movement patients need for active life. Underwater exercise is most effective. Limbs buoyed up let weakened muscles strengthen themselves. With drugs to deaden pain, this is often enough, but rheumatoid arthritis sufferers, likely to have fresh attacks anytime, must learn this program of exercises to continue it at home. Teaching becomes all important. Patients must learn to live with their condition. It takes determination. Exercising every day would be soul-destroying without the strong incentive of regaining their physical independence. Even then, some patients are unsure of their progress. They must be coaxed not to rely on supporting sticks or crutches. Many seemingly crippled people can be helped given this confidence and training. For the permanently disabled, artificial aids. Surgical boots transform bedridden invalids into contributing members of the family. The hospital files all records like these shoe molds and keeps in touch with patients at home. Mrs. Lorna Duff is visited by Mrs. Campbell, hospital social worker, quite often. Mrs. Duff runs her own home despite very limited body movement. Eighteen months ago it was feared she'd stay in hospital permanently but by strength of will in organizing her house using district nursing help, she's won her battle for independence and been an inspiration to everyone. Her whole home's been adapted for limited movement. Mrs. Duff imagines similar houses could be built for people like herself at less cost than two years hospital care. Such fully equipped villages would depend on public help. Meanwhile, the hospital continues studying the enigma of rheumatoid arthritis. Blood settlement shows the rate at which the disease attacks, sometimes slowly, sometimes fast. Why the body suddenly decides to stiffen joints instead of lubricating, no one knows. Some clue comes from comparisons. Microscopic examination of joint fluid shows New Zealand sufferers have the same tiny fatty particles in protein cells as found by researchers in France. Rheumatism research everywhere is being intensified and people are realizing the hope offered by hospitals like the Queen Elizabeth, Rotorua.